The first satanic temple is advertising abortion again. But this time, they made a cartoon to advertise it seemingly to young girls. As we look at Satan's continued plan to garner more ignorant adherents, whether in jest or not. Welcome back to the Good Fight Radio Show. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about Satanism as well as abortion and a number of topics, especially the fact that so many Satanists want you to believe that they really don't worship Satan. They're just really angry atheists. But to discuss this very important topic with me is none other than the president and founder of Good Fight Ministries and pastor of Blessed Hope Chapel in Simi Valley, California, Pastor Joe Schimmel. Yeah, Chad, it's something that we've been exposing for decades, right? Uh, and of course, the Bible says that Satan uh, doesn't come in as Irenaeus, the early church father, said, in all of his naked deformity. And the apostle Paul said he comes as the angel of light. And he says, no wonder, for his servants also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds, you know, 2 Corinthians 11. So the, God's word warns us that not only Satan, but his servants would try to be presenting themselves as though they were doing good. And it's crazy because, Chad, as you know, the scriptures warn that in the last days they'd be calling good evil and evil good and put light for darkness and darkness for light. And here they're putting liberty for actually enslavement and death and calling it life and liberty. So uh, I'm excited to get into this. Hey Amen. And that's that's an important thing. And for those who don't know why we're talking about this subject, a, a recent, and it's gone a little viral as well, a uh, recent commercial that was done by the satan the first satanic temple and i know a lot of people before we even play this a lot of people oh this is what they want this is what they want is just more exposure and they just want you angry and you talking about it i'm going to tell you right now i want people to see this in light of the truth rather than just see it being thrown up there and so yes i don't care what they want we're going to do what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, and have no fellowship with it, but rather expose it. Amen. And it's one of those things we want to make sure that we're saying, hey, there are actual arguments being made here, or there are things being stated here, there are things being advertised here that are killing babies. And so yeah. let's expose it for the wickedness that it is, and also show you it's not light, it's not a joke, and guess what? It's no joke. They are coming after your children. It can seem like everyone is making decisions about your body. Like you can't be trusted to make your own choices. Everyone. Except Satan. The Satanic Temple believes in the religious right to bodily autonomy. We believe so deeply that we exercise that right with... Samuel Alito's mom, Satanic Abortion Clinic. Our clinic provides safe religious reproductive health care. We partnered with an accredited pharmacy to deliver abortion medication. And best of all, our services are free. To learn more or to receive free reproductive health care, visit our website. To support our fight for religious reproductive rights, donate $6.66 a month month or more to abortion clinic support tst health supreme courtship fundraiser and choose from a variety of donation gifts including a sam sack lunchbox a get out of pregnancy free card and our scoda series of condoms featuring all nine justices donate today well there it is and you are hearing that and sadly enough joe one of the things i guess you know before i even get into the whole samuel alito's satanic abortion clinic and how they they do that, the Supreme Court justices, the condoms they're selling and, and are given out and, and so forth on there. And you're, you're, you have to understand this is the new way of abortion. Uh, first of all, it's always been a sacrifice to Satan, whether it was the Moloch or Baal or whoever it is, it has always been a sacrifice to Satan. Every, for, for that, that's what this has always been, is child sacrifice. But now, Joe, the, the heartbreaking thing is they're now giving medicine to kill the baby. A lot, instead of having these young girls travel down to go and have these abortion doctors rip babies limb from limb and then sometimes sell the parts, this is now the new wave is we'll give you a pill to pop to murder the baby and to kill it. And and Joe, just as a, as a side note, it's a pagan Hippocratic Oath, but that, that used to be a part of the Hippocratic Oath, yeah, one of the, the original... Irony was that you were not going to take anything and ingest anything that would end the life of a child. And yet this is what these hypocrites, these 
you know, these people claiming to be doctors or whatever are actually doing. They're sending out abortion pills and murdering, murdering babies. And it's a heartbreaking thing. Yeah, it's, it's really heartbreaking, Chad. Uh, the early church fathers, they condemned the use of uh, pharmakeia because of two reasons, two main reasons. One was because uh, it was used in potions. They used drugs to open you up to the demonic world, which was is happening right now, whether it's through meth or uh, magic mushrooms, hallucinogens, psilocybin, LSD, you know, uh, DMT, all sorts of, you know, uh, hallucinogens. But also uh, they condemned it because it was used to kill children. They used drugs. Way back in the first, second century, they were uh, doing that in the Roman Empire, and the early church fathers condemned that, what they called pharmakeia, which, as you know, Chad, and many of you in our audience know, is condemned in the book of Revelation four times. Uh, so it's really heartbreaking. But it's also interesting, Chad, you mentioned how sacrificing or killing your baby, you may not recognize it. Uh, you may say, well, I mean, most people realize they're sacrificing their baby so they can have more time, so they have more money maybe, more convenience not deal with the stigma of having a, a child, or whatever may be in their mind. But uh, in ancient times, they would sacrifice their children, as Chad said, to Topheth, to Moloch, uh, Baal, different different gods at different times. And the Bible says in the law, Deuteronomy, uh, they're sacrificing basically to these gods, these are demons. And the book of Psalms says the same thing. And Paul in 1 Corinthians, I believe, chapter 10 20 through 21, he says what the Gentiles sacrifice, they don't sacrifice unto God, but they sacrifice unto demons. So a lot of times, this, and this is important, people get a misconception. Uh, well, I'm just doing this. It's not that big of a deal. Well, first of all, uh, it's murder, you know, and if you've had an abortion or you're a man and you've encouraged your girlfriend or your wife to have an abortion, it is murder and we have to just be real, you know. Before I met my wife and uh, she had had a couple of abortions and when she became a Christian, uh, I played a song for her, and I didn't know her past. We're driving, and we're just, you know, starting to see each other. And then all of a sudden, I hit pause. I said, you know, you know what? This song is about abortion. I don't know if you want me to, about, ooh, man, this might be a heavy subject. She goes, she came out of the now movement. She's like, I am women kind of mentality. When Before she was saved, went to some now, a lot of now meetings with her mom. She hit, uh, she said, no, I'm, I'm good with it. She's a new Christian. So I'm like, oh, wow. And the song was from the Psalms where the baby, the song is appropriated for the baby crying out to deliver him or herself from being butchered. And as she's listening to the song, it was like a piercing cry. You know, I can still feel it to this day. It's like, turn it off. Because I'm driving, I'm not even seeing her at that moment. Turn it off, turn it off. And we had to pull over and she's bawling. And a lot of times you don't realize how serious sin is and what you're doing. And until you do, uh, I let her know there's forgiveness in Christ. So you can be forgiven. I think that's important to know. And we need to be forgiven if we're going to be right with God. But Chad, uh, incredibly, a lot of people that are presenting this, it's not, there's not a guilt or a concern about, you know, killing. It's all in the guise of freedom, you know. And the Bible talks about the false prophets where they promise you freedom, but they themselves are the slaves of corruption. And that's what these guys are. That's exactly right. They're slaves to corruption. And when we see this and these lies that are, told to young people uh, and that is it's sad that that is the war cry for so many specifically in our country in the United States when it comes to those on the left this is what this is it like this is their entire campaign model is just to get people somebody is trying to take your rights away and this is your right to yeah. end this this baby's life and sadly enough now you have on what people would call the right they're all acquiescing too. I mean, over and over again, you're listening to conservative talking yeah. heads basically saying like, hey, we're going to lose the election if we don't, you know, if we don't give in a little bit on, uh, you know, abortion and so forth. And the truth is like, what are you conserving? Like if you can call yourself a conservative, what are you conserving? Mm -hmm. If you aren't conserving life at the very least, like you are doing very little uh, to do really anything. And so it... It's a sad thing to see. It's a heartbreaking thing. But ultimately, what we also want to talk about on this show, I, I hopefully at this point, you guys all know that abortion is an abominable act, that it's something that when God says in Proverbs 6, the things that he hates, and, and this is, it's not like he doesn't hate other things, but let's specifically hone in on certain things that God hates. And one of those things is hands, the hands that shed innocent blood. 
And so it is so clear to us. And remember that when they were doing these sacrifices in Jeremiah chapter 19, it actually calls them innocent as well, which was a legal decree for a for a baby that was being sacrificed. The babies were being called innocent. Yeah. The babies were being called innocent. And so, yes, under the same classification, the the same hands that that shed innocent blood are shedding the blood of babies that are called innocent in God's word as well. Amen. So yes, these are the very things that God hates. And so yes, uh, we should know that. We should also recognize that it's a baby in the womb. It just just from John the Baptist alone being the first to recognize Jesus, right in yeah. the womb uh, when Jesus was conceived. When Jesus, yeah, exactly yeah, at conception, the, it, not six weeks later, folks. Amen. Amen. So just wanted to get those out of the way before we talk about something else here. And that is specific to the Church of Satan. And and Joe, here is something once again, uh, and, and notice the, the jovial nature of this cartoon. Not And it all just sounds like a nice little, you know, oh, here, donate $6.66 and let's be really jovial. Oh, what a coincidence, funny. yeah. Oh, yeah. Let, let, we all think we're so funny because we'll, we'll poke fun at, at Christians and, and so forth. But but here's the thing, Joe. They've done this forever. Mm-hmm. It seems like when it comes to Satanism, always and and you already started the the show quoting both uh, Paul and also Irenaeus that you know what you know Satan would not just come out in its naked deformity, but they will try to come and show himself to be more true than truth itself. And That's right. they're That's trying Irenaeus to just too. saying yeah, exactly. And they are going to act like, hey, this is. This is just, oh, we're fun and joke. It's just a different philosophy, actually. This is your truth, maybe, yeah. Joe. And what people may may not realize is this is not just a new theory for Satanists to do this. We can go back to, obviously, Satan in the Garden of Eden trying to make himself look even more upright than, than God himself yeah. by saying, oh, well, God, right. I'm not lying to you. I'm showing you the truth, you know, and so forth. That's a great point. But you also have, Joe even in the more form of modern Satanism. And let's actually go even a little bit before Crowley, you know, contemporary, but a little bit earlier on with Helena Blavatsky and the way that she made Satan look, you know, Lucifer, I should say, uh, look over and over again. It just seems like this lightening the load of what Satan really is has always been so clearly passed on to try to make it more palatable. Yes, and I know we want to cover uh, many of those who've had the greatest influence on the New Age movement and Satanism, so we can't spend time on a, a lot of these folks, but we thought it'd be better for you guys, Chad and I, as we discussed this before we came on, uh, to discuss them and make some just quick hits so you understand that all of these folks, for the most part, present them present a gentler, kinder form of Satanism, or, oh, well, it's not really Satanism. And, and Blavatsky, you know, she tried to, you know, present it as, you know, vibrations and metaphysics and, and you know, this, she called it the, you know, new age way back then. And Helena Blavatsky was a Russian mystic. She started the Theosophical Society in 1875. And, but she wrote, we don't have time to quote it all. We've, we've done whole shows on, with many things regarding Blavatsky. In fact, uh, uh, the manifest, the true manifestation of evil uh, that was done, what, three, four months ago. Uh, but in that, well, I'll just say this much. She talks about Satan being our liberator. Uh, he's our redeemer. Uh, and she just calls him as the, our savior. Uh, and she's channeling spirit. She admits that and so forth. So uh, she was promoting Satan. But then on the other hand, she would, you know, talk about, well, well, he's more of a metaphor. He doesn't really exist and so forth. Of course, they have to do that. Otherwise, people are going to drop her like a hot potato. But uh, at the same time, Satan wants to be glorified. So the truth comes out. And you see in a lot of her writings, where she actually believed at times and would present Satan as a true entity. You know, it's, and not just her, and and for me, when I'm looking at it, it's very eerie when you even see pictures of these two people, but Elena Blavatsky, she might have been the, the female version of what Aleister Crowley being yeah. the male version, when you see them yeah. and him being more aligned with so much of the, the drug revolution, the sexual promiscuity, all of this debaucherous behavior. And and Joe, once again, he would also try to be light on his feet. He would also try to joke around yeah. a lot. And, and it looks like a lot of people got really confused by him as well. Yeah, and, that, and that's a great point because Crowley at times would say, oh yeah, Satan doesn't really exist and so forth. Uh, but then when you look at his book of the law, which all of his other books basically orbited around 
and that his whole life was based on that revelation from a spirit entity that channeled uh, to him the book of the law, which say, states things with my hawk's head, and I'll peck out the eyes of Jesus as he hangs upon the cross and so forth. Uh, the, the spirit identified its name as Iwas, and later he identifies that uh, Iwas in a footnote in his book Magic as Satan uh, himself. And Chad, you and I have both looked a lot at his so-called hagiography, uh, his warped sense of humor, uh, the biography of a saint. Hagias is a Greek word for holy or holy one or saint. And uh, in that, he talks, it's his biography, he talks about how uh, he, his dad was a Plymouth Brethren evangelist and and he, at the same time, he was brought up that way, but he was just so evil that his mom would call him the Beast. He later signed his name, the Beast 666. And it's interesting because Crowley says he wanted to get hold of, when he read the book of Revelation, he'd see Christ the Lamb, but he was really drawn to the dragon and Satan. He said he wasn't content to just get a hold of the devil, but he said he wanted to get hold of him personally and become his chief of staff. And he was channeling demons. I mean, and he basically is the cornerstone of modern day New Age occultism, his teachings. And he talked all about, as you know, Chad, butchering babies to, uh, for power to be released to him as a Satanist and the best sacrifice being that of a young male child. Well, you don't get much younger than being in the womb. Amen. And like you said, even in Confessions of Aleister Crowley, this is his autobiography. Yeah. And that's where he clearly stated that, as you mentioned, he believed the doctrines of the Plymouth Brethren. He said, but I simply went yeah. over to Satan's side yeah. into this hour. I cannot tell why. This is not somebody who just, oh, yeah, no, it's all just fake and let's just joke about it. But he knew he had to He He was not going to get the adherence if he just came out and said, oh, let's just worship Satan. That's so important that you bring that up because he even wrestled with the idea that he was saved in the past as a Plymouth Brethren, and he was taught the doctrine of once saved, always saved. He says that he was taught as a, a Calvinist because it's a Calvinist group uh, that, er, that he was predestined to salvation. And there's nothing he could do to forfeit it. So he's thought to do things like, you know, blaspheme the Holy Spirit to make sure he could totally renounce God and not be saved, which is really crazy when we think about it so he was wrestling with trying to make sure he could defy god and follow satan and you know sure enough the bible doesn't teach that you're predestined without a choice uh, and that god doesn't you know have foreknowledge of your choices the bible puts you know he that god's for god has foreknown he's predestined so god uses foreknowledge he knows who will receive christ and that's what the early church, church fathers believed he knows who will receive and who will reject him foreknowledge and predestination go together what god's joined together let no man separate uh, so it's really tragic because, but he presented to his followers like Blavatsky, Satan as, well, you know, we don't really believe in Satan, but he encouraged them to follow Satan. All the time Satan's, you know, laughing about this. Yeah, whether he, <laughs> it didn't matter. He just, as long as he has his inheritance. But another another one who followed a lot of Lester Crowley's teachings as well and quoted him, you know, extensively, even in, uh, you know, the Satanic Bible, so to speak, is Anton LaVey. And he is another one and, and guys, this one, I'm going to be honest with you. If you have not read the article, The Truth About Sa the Satanic Cults, on our website, we'll put a link in the description here. But if you have not read it, I encourage you guys to check it out now. We've had a number of Satanists come out of Satanism and honestly look at the truths of Christianity from this article. Somebody actually was printing it out and, and handing it out as a Bible track up in the San Francisco area. But you you have to read it. But, and Joe, and, and I think it's in one of our more popular videos that we have out recently, I quoted extensively in that uh, video, and it is very interesting that people fell for Anton LaVey's tactics, very similar to Blavatsky and Crowley and Satan himself, but it seems like a lot of people fell for this tactic of, oh, we're not really, worship, we're just re worshiping nature and it's really just a philosophy and so forth. And it looks like they're getting duped too. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I went years ago with my wife a couple times to interview Susan Atkins. Uh, and that that's what precipitated in my experience in interviewing her and, and seeking the Lord about it, uh, the writing of that article. Because when my wife and I were interviewing Susan, she was convicted of nine of the Manson murders. Uh, she died in 2011. Uh, but we interviewed her a couple different times, and she's a professing Christian, and we were able to get in there uh, because of a connection with a friend of hers uh, that was in the prison. And when I interviewed her, 
I wanted her to speak to that issue because I was already uh, just, man, so many Satanists are being deceived into thinking that Satan isn't even real, but they're actually joining, you know, the Church of Satan and so forth and other Satanic cults. And in interviewing her, I brought up that question as to what was your experience? Were you duped by Anton LaVey into thinking that, you know, he uh, he wasn't really a Satanist? He was basically just an atheist. And it was amazing because she stated that she never, ever learned that it, her time there, oh, yeah, Satan isn't real. Anton told me that as a Satanist, he does believe in the God of the Bible, but he refused to worship him and made a conscious decision to worship Satan instead. I had a terrible headache, and Anton's wife got some juice out of the refrigerator so I could take some aspirin. It was then that I saw a bottle with something red in it. Anton's wife said it was blood that they used in their sacrifices. I told Anton that I needed to leave because I had a terrible headache and I believe in God. It was at this point Anton told me, We believe in him too, we just don't worship him. Anton made it very clear to me that they truly worship Satan as a real entity. This is something that the inner core and the Church of Satan keep from the lower level initiates. They deny that they really worship Satan as a true entity in order to recruit those who would not otherwise join the Church of Satan. But when I was involved with Anton LaVey, it was made very clear that they truly worship the devil. And I'll just say this. I think this is important to understand. There's a book out called Lucifer Rising that I read years ago. It was written by a uh, member of the Church of Satan uh, who was somewhat prominent in uh, writing as a journalist in, in, with regard to music. And uh, he became a member of the Church of Satan. And he's interviewing different Satanists. And he's interviewing... Anton LaVey. And then he tells Anton, why do you say to those folks who, uh, those other Satanists that feel you're not extreme enough, that you're kind of a joke because, you know, Anton would present himself as, oh, it's not, it's just atheism. Like this group that we've exposed, the beginning of this is saying. And Anton let his hair down, letting people know that obviously we're for real, you know, but we had to do this as a kind of a balancing act. In fact, I'll quote him in the book. This is page 133 of Lucifer Rising. Uh, if they're at all intelligent, speaking of other true Satanists, if they're all intelligent, they'll realize that there's only so much I can say publicly. I will not advance things in print which make my position untenable. How long would the church of Satan have lasted if I, I hadn't appeased and outraged in just the right combination? It required a certain amount of discretion and diplomacy to balance the outrage. So Chad, he's saying, hey, I had to make sure I did this balancing act, public relations, to suck people in. Because if people realize I actually worship Satan, and I was going to bring them, help bring Satan, you know, Satan bring them to hell for eternity, they never joined the cult. You know, and for Anton, you know, there's another guy who was just right underneath him who started his own satanic set, and that was Kenneth Anger as well, the guy who made Lucifer Rising. Yeah. It's a guy who's good friends with James Franco, yeah. by the way, and plenty of others in Hollywood. You've exposed them. And Asia Satanism. Argento as well, and, and, and some of these guys. And you see Lady Gaga following some of his films as well. And, and so, you know, there's another guy tied to the Church of Satan. And these guys are gross, and they really do believe in Satan. Yeah, and Elusive Loose Rising, uh, other movies. I mean, Mick Jagger, you know. Uh, has participated in Mary and Faithful, his wife at the time, and Jimmy Page is sitting there with a a, a dagger underneath a big picture of a Lester Crowley uh, and Loose Verizon and so forth, uh, and contributed music that and not getting used for that, uh, soundtrack for that. Uh, same deal, you know, Kenneth Anger co-founded the Church of Satan, but he really promoted Satan to Lester Crowley a lot, and that's what he's known for. But Chad, on the front cover of the film, you know, Loose Verizon, uh, it states that that, that, that Lucifer is not the devil, you know? You know he's not, basically, he's not evil, you know? Uh, he said, Lucifer is the light God, not the devil, you know? And again, Satan masquerades himself as an angel of light, as we know, but in that same book, Lucifer Rising, he's being interviewed, along with others, including Anton LaVey, and on page 47, he admits that, guess what? Right there, uh, yeah, Lucifer always was the devil of the Bible. Uh, so a lot of these top guys know what's going on. Uh, I'd be shocked if uh, the people that are at the head of this newer satanic cult are that are claimed to be atheists, if uh, they're not doing the same thing. God knows. I mean, I think they're smarter than that, you know, and they know what they're doing, but the people that they're deceiving don't. In fact, I'm just going to let you know uh, in our audience, we love you, you know. God loves you so much. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, he can forgive you. 
fact, Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I won't cast away. And you need to understand this. You may say, well, I have no affiliation with any satanic cult. I just do my own thing. You know, Jesus said, he that's not with me is against me. And Jesus said to religious people of his time in John 8, 44, uh, you are of your father, the devil. You know, he was a murderer from the beginning. He did not abide in the truth. He's the father of lies. And, and they thought they were going to heaven, but they're rejecting Christ. Uh, if you reject Christ, there's no salvation. The Bible says, how will you escape if you neglect such a great salvation? God's provided salvation for you uh, through Christ's death, his son's death on the cross. You paid for all of your sins. And you have to make a conscious choice to acknowledge that you're a sinner and admit it and embrace Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and recognize he paid for your sins. He rose again. He conquered Satan on the cross. Uh, he conquered death. He conquered hell. And he will provide an eternal abode for you in his eternal kingdom if you embrace him as your Lord and Savior and turn from this darkness and all your sin and just turn to Jesus Christ. You'll be forgiven. It'll enable you to live an empowered life for Christ. Amen. We love you guys. God bless you guys. Amen. Hey, Joe Schimmel here. We want to thank you for watching. We want to also encourage you not to forget to sign up or subscribe to Good Fight Ministries' YouTube channel. We have the most amazing content. We also have the very popular Good Fight radio show where we examine all kinds of things in light of Scripture, as well as 511 News, which is also very eye-opening. And we also have mind-blowing video exposés that you won't see anywhere else. And our 24-7 online radio station, the Good Fight Radio Network, as well as my sermons from Blessed Hope Chapel over on the Blessed Hope Chapel YouTube channel. So thanks again. We'll see you later. And we just pray that the Lord blesses you richly as you seek His face. And this week's feature product is Sparky the Broken Mirror. You can check it out at sparkybook.com.